Hello. So, first of all, I'm really happy that so many people are interested in uh, uh, clean architecture or coding clean components in the front end. Uh, code quality or clean code is something that I really am passionate about, and I think that learning some tricks can actually help you to significantly improve your code and make it a lot more testable. And uh, yeah, I kind of repurposed my initial idea of using S Snake to convey some of these ideas uh, because I was inspired by a talk yesterday about clean architecture, looking at it a bit from a higher level and uh, I, I just felt that that was exactly what I wanted to share too. Uh, so first of all a bit about me. Uh, my name is Peter and I'm a developer at Small Improvements in uh, Berlin. Uh, I'm a big fan of many things but among these things are functional programming, clean code, keeping things simple regardless of what it is and perhaps a bit random air quality. I'm quite obsessed about uh, measuring particles and stuff. Uh, some odd things about me. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, so even if uh, snake is not like a main thing now, uh, but I still have a lot of snake stuff and it might be helpful for you to see uh, an example of uh, how it looks, uh, just so that the code examples are a bit clearer. So let me embarrass myself by losing a snake quickly. So this is the game that uh, I built. And we will use that as an example, but I will also go beyond uh, just snake and show you some examples that are perhaps more in line with what you might, oh, I died. <laughs> Uh, that are a bit more in line with what you might uh, be, be coding uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But I think Snake is a great example because it's a, uh, yeah, you can see it as a component with quite a lot of interaction. Uh, so a quick outline. Uh, uh, first, we'll look a bit at uh, presentation versus model or, present, uh, or view versus logic, uh, whatever you call it. But I'm trying to uh, distinguish between these two different things and then uh, dive a bit deeper into uh, uh, what a model is, how it can look like. And uh, then uh, proceed with views because they are pretty useful. Uh, and some testing on top of that and finally I will uh, summarize learnings. So what you can take with you. So let's start with kind of a quiz or uh, just yeah, engaging you as the audience. Uh, so if you look at the first one, a checkout flow, what would you categorize that as? Is that a presentation thing or is it like more model logic? Any opinions, ideas? Sorry? Yeah, it's good. Um, uh, I will also share my opinions uh, after. Uh, <laughs> and uh, generating components, what would you treat that as? Ah, very good. And uh, setting game over if you hit the wall. Ah, very nice. Um, and yeah, the first one a bit tricky in uh, my opinion. Uh, I think there's both and you have to remember here that we are looking at uh, focusing on the front end a bit. So what a, what a model is in the front end can be a bit different from what you would see it as in the back end, uh, for example. Uh, I think some frameworks call it also a uh, view model, for example, which is uh, kind of speaking to that. But yeah, I would see checkout flow as uh, it needs both, both sides, generating components, uh, presentation ideally of a model, and setting game over uh, if you hit the wall, and this is in Snake, then I would treat as a model concern. So what can a model look like? 
Here's an example of a checkout model uh, I made up. <laughs> so you have a step, uh, because this is a stepwise, uh, stepwise process, and the first step uh, could, for example, be entering your contact details, which consists of uh, a bunch of fields, uh, and then perhaps, yeah, perhaps based on the country you select, you offer different payment methods or something, so you need uh, this for multiple purposes, both to influence how you render the view later on and uh, uh, to have this logic in the system. So uh, in Iceland you can pay with cookies, but uh, in Sweden maybe you pay with blueberries or something. Uh, uh, another model would be Snake, my favorite model. Uh, so in Snake, it's uh, yeah you saw me playing it before, and uh, I was listing the or showing the status if it's game over or the game is running, the score, uh, and then you have a bunch of. Uh, details that you need to keep track of uh, to be able to like uh, yeah decide what happens next C can i press up what uh, happens when the time goes on will i move up if i eat an apple what happens then and where are actually the apples um, so let's do an experiment uh, because we didn't introduce views yet really so how would it look if you would just play with a model. Um, and we will go into this, uh, this code a bit later, so don't have to care too much about it. So a very easy way to play with a model is to just use console log. Yeah, it's, it becomes a bit tricky, I think. Yeah, already game over. Uh, now the challenge is kind of not eating the apples, but staying al alive. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how it looks, and it shows that the model is kind of enough in a sense. Uh, it's what you need to be running whatever you do, and uh, the checkout example, exa for example, you could also technically work with the model, you see the step and you, you're on your own say that, ah, so now I need to fill in the contact details. Um, but uh, it's really boring to play with uh, this model directly, so we need views. Uh, and uh, what is a view? Yeah, it, it, you can see it as something that you just connect to your model, uh, kind of a mapping of your model into something else. So you take the model, transform it. Uh, for example, you already seen how I did it into the browser using uh, under the hood React components. Uh, you also seen one of the other one here, console log that I used. It's in a sense a view, uh, and then I could also implement a terminal view, uh, which I actually did. But uh, what is a view at a bit of a higher level? So, in essence, uh, if we look at the snake example, you present the model and then, uh, yeah, I'm kind of combining also uh, what you would, if you know MVC, for example, you would typically treat this as the controller bit, but uh, in the React world, it's very common to uh, group these together in the component, uh, which I also do. Uh, but so, a view, uh, in React world is about pres uh, presenting what you have, so we need to draw the status in some way. So this is the conceptual idea, and we draw the apples, we draw the snake, we draw the walls, and uh, we repeat, and we need to move the game forward by calling this tick which moves it, moves it forward in time. And then we have a bunch of things that allow us to manipulate this view. And uh, as I said, the uh, snake is just an example because it's fun to work with, but actually this is how I think you should uh, be coding in your normal day-to-day -day coding. Uh, for example, with the checkout flow, you could have something like this. 
So we render uh, the contact details which is some kind of form and uh, this form has uh, some handlers that allow you to manipulate the model. So this set name will uh, give in a model and a new name give you back a new model which has this name set and then you re-render it. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not limited to Snake but you can apply it for anything basically in the front end. Uh, and let's have a quick look at uh, how this actually looks in uh, real code. Mm, ah, let's also revert this. So can, can everyone see the code? Is it large enough? Cool. Uh, so this conceptual, yeah, there is some boilerplate here because uh, this model is running in the terminal. But uh, you can see these draw methods here, draw snake, draw apples, and then, uh, yeah, a bit boilerplate getting the initiali initialization. Uh, but here is the loop that you saw in this conceptual idea where we draw the different parts uh, and uh, manipulating the model. And uh, one observation is that it's pretty simple in, uh, there are not many like if statements, uh, conditionals and stuff. Uh, and let's also have a look at uh, uh, React one. Let's see. Cool, uh, yeah, and b by the way, I'm using some uh, TypeScript, but uh, to such a ex small extent, so uh, it, you don't really need to know it or care about it. Um, so it looks a bit different because I'm using React here and have to adapt to React, but uh, the principle is still the same. So up here I have these uh, mappings that allow me to control the model and uh, yeah, need to do it a bit differently because I don't want to re-render all the time. Uh, and uh, here is the game loop and uh, because uh, in React you, given the state update, you render the state so, so I don't do draw walls and stuff here but I rather do that here that you might recognize. Uh, and again, something to observe is that this is pretty simple code. Uh, there's not much that tells you about uh, the game for example. You can't really say uh, even what happens if I eat an apple. All of this is not, not existing here, but everything is just about putting the pixels on the, uh, in the browser, basically. Uh, so let's jump back to your presentation. Um, yeah, testing. Um, so, uh, uh, actually, I wonder if I... Yeah, I've been running through it pretty quick, but uh, testing is a very interesting topic, so let's try to spend some time there. Um, so, test. Uh, one problem that I often see, and uh, if you look at... Uh, Well, actually, we will see it when we look at the test. So, a problem with tests that I often see is that they are very, very detailed. It's like, uh, for example, in a snake game, a test could be, hey, set movement vector should set the movement vector, uh, and you assert on that. And, uh, I mean, that's an extreme example, but you will see often a huge amount of tests that are uh, at a very detailed level. And I want to show you how I think tests should look like, and how these principles, when you put them all together, makes it really easy to accomplish that. So... So these are my tests for the snake model. Uh, yeah, first start with a bunch of simple tests that uh, uh, that you would probably normally see also, but uh, 
uh, then I test uh, confirm that very important properties of the snake model works, for example, uh, different seeds. So uh, this is another point that allowed me to do testing well that I uh, I don't rely, uh, my model is pure as well, maybe that's something worth mentioning that uh, the model, the execution of the model will always give the same result and one key aspect of that is that it's pure. Um, so I'm using a seed that initializes a random generator that allows me to still get randomness in it while keeping it pure. Uh, I can show you that soon, but uh, here I just confirmed the property, but the more interesting tests are uh, here where I'm pretty much playing the game. So going into the top wall leads to game over and uh, check the other walls as well. Uh, eating an apple increases the score by one and what do I do? Well, I just create a game instance and play until I eat an apple and thanks to uh, using this uh, seed for the random generation uh, I know that the apple will always be at the same place even if uh, a user would perceive it as random. Uh, of course when you play the game I just use a random seed every time that uh, makes sure that you can't memorize where the apples are and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but I managed to test like pretty much the whole game here. Snake is growing, uh, snake crashing into itself leads to game over and all of this is done uh, uh, with tests that basically could be just the usage of the code. Uh, and yeah, what enables this simple testing? Yeah, a pure model, uh, the random generation, Something very important is simple construction of the uh, object. Let me show you. So to create a snake game, uh, and this is actually something you typically don't fully can control because sometimes you just need a lot of data, but uh, uh, based on my experience, uh, uh, yeah, f from whenever I started being professional software developer, the, one of the biggest obstacles are that uh, it's hard to test and it makes people skip it. So uh, easy construction, uh, a rich model with very meaningful modifiers. So I'm a big fan of uh, DDD, domain driven design, and uh, this is something I brought with me from that. Uh, so rather than uh, having a set movement vector method on my model that uh, I looked at a lot of snake implementations and most of them were dealing with uh, updating the DX, DY to, uh, to make things, uh, yeah, to change the movement but I just call it move up and that's what I use in my tests. So I, I tried to make the model very deep uh, in a sense. So there is of course a lot involved in moving up. I have to check if it's possible and stuff like that. Uh, uh, but the model only exposes a uh, simple move up. Uh, yeah, or we have the move down example here. Um, and a complete separation of model and view. I think that's the most essential things and it boils down to uh, separation of concerns, what we discussed in the beginning with uh, what, is, uh, what is presentation, what is model. Uh, this is really the key to, uh, to code cleaner components because uh, the, as you've seen the examples, the view layers just bec uh, are trivial basically and all the logic lives in the model. Uh, and the model itself is also trivial or at least you can make it. It's a, a bit of a different small scale challenge how you code it. Uh, but as long as the interface from it is nice then uh, uh, you have something really nice to work with that will kind of translate into a simple view, simple React components. Uh, yeah, and I think it's important that uh, in your day-to-day -day work you need to remove obstacles. You need to make it really simple to make people test more uh, because this is, 
I often heard uh, these arguments like, is testing really worth it? It's such a big maintenance burden, uh, it just takes a lot of time. But I think if you showed tests where uh, an application where all tests looks kind of like this, then this would partly disappear. Uh, and this is what happened at uh, uh, my work, for example, we, we started to write way simpler tests and uh, uh, it makes a lot of people write more tests. Uh, like you can just see that, that when you extract out the logic from the components, then it's so easy, so there is no excuse. And the tests are really meaningful as well, so you, you kind of can motivate for yourself why they are valuable. Um, so what are the biggest learnings? Well, I would say that I have a, a lot of learnings in one way, but uh, there are only two things that are really important to, like if you would start to do this, I think you would produce better code. Uh, that's my, my belief that uh, if you kick, up, kick out the model from your components to really be strict about separating it, go back to the old MVC routes, uh, I'm sure you've done it at some point, then uh, yeah, separate it out and uh, I, I, for example at work I'm, I'm really happy every time I see a, a folder which has the component, uh, we often put it in index.js and next to it sits a model.js and this is a really small model that, or well the size doesn't matter but it's a model where all the logic has been extracted which ensures that the component itself is super pure, super nice, super easy to read. And the model is trivial to test, super quick to test. And as I showed you, uh, the tests are not really limited to a set movement vector or stuff like that, but you can actually test the whole logic, uh, such as playing a game of snake or whatever you are doing, a checkout flow. Uh, yeah, I think we uh, can go to, if, if there are any questions. Everything crystal, yeah, you in the back. That's correct, and that was uh, an example of uh, uh, like kind of one of the points of uh, you normally you don't care about that you don't need to run your model in different places but uh, this is a free benefit you get and uh, it's a clear example of uh, how separation of concerns help you so if we look at my uh, snake model So, so the snake model, it really doesn't know anything about where it's running. We are creating the, uh, the, the model that I showed. And uh, yeah, I'm using some interesting concepts, but not so important. Uh, uh, but then we have these move up, move down. And uh, let's look at the exported things and the tick method, get the score. Uh, so it doesn't matter where it runs and that's why I could run it in the terminal and uh, browser. Uh, actually I might also, uh, so in the terminal I also did, ah. uh, uh, I did build an uh, interface so you can actually play it as a real snake as well. And uh, the, uh, like views, you can have as many views as you want by separating the model out like this. Uh, any other questions? Or do you want to see uh, details of any specific part? Okay, so maybe a final question from me. Uh, did you learn anything? Do you feel that, will you separate out your models a, a tiny bit more after my talk at least?
I see nodding heads. Very nice. Uh, it's truly, uh, it it truly has a very big impact on your code. Uh, uh, and for me, these the principles from clean architecture that uh, I read the book and I often apply it in the back end. And I also read the DDD book, which I really love, uh, which uh, emphasizes separating out the business logic, which in this case would be the snake model. Uh, and this this theory can really help you to produce. Uh, cleaner code that is just easier to maintain, more fun to work with. Uh, yeah, so if there are no questions or anything you want to see, uh, yeah, this is what you would have seen in my FB talk, but maybe next time. Uh, but very nice, in my opinion. Okay, that's it then. Thank you very much, and uh, please.